Chick-fil-A is one of the most successful fast food chains in the U.S. as they are the fifth largest in the U.S. and generate more revenue per restaurant than any other chain. Chick-fil-A sales have grown to over $10 billion last year and they even passed KFC as the largest chicken retailer in the U.S. in 2013. So how did Chick-fil-A even start and how did they get so big? Make sure to stick around till the end to find out. Chick-fil-A actually has its roots in Dwarf Grill, which was established in 1946 by Truth Cathy. This was a small restaurant in Happville, Georgia, a small suburb of Atlanta. This actually grew into a chain and today they actually have 12 locations which are called Dwarf House. In 1961, after 15 years in the fast food business, Cathy actually invented the pressure fryer which could cook chicken in the same amount of time as you could cook a hamburger. He put a chicken between two buns, which was super odd at the time, but this would eventually become a pretty popular meal. He then went down and registered the name Chick-fil-A, which is a play on the word filet, and the A shows that it was A plus food. He also went out and trademarked the slogan, we didn't invent the chicken, we just invented a chicken sandwich. He then went down and opened the first Chick-fil-A in 1967 in Green Bear Mall in a suburb of Atlanta. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, they expanded quickly and opened a lot more locations, but these were all mainly in malls. The first freestanding location was opened on April 16, 1986 in Atlanta, Georgia. From then on, he really started to focus on standalone stores as opposed to food court stores. And since the very beginning, they always had Sundays off, as he believed that his employees and operators should have at least one day to rest and spend time with their family and friends. He said that he didn't want to work on Sundays and he didn't want to pay someone to do something that he wouldn't want to do himself. He also thought that this one day off would really maximize productivity during the rest of the week. Since then, they have expanded across the US but most of the locations are in the southern suburbs. In their whole lifetime, they've only had two international ventures which were into Canada and South Africa. In September of 1994, they opened their first location outside of the US in the University of Alberta in Edmonton. But this store did not perform well and in just two to three years, they closed down the store and they wouldn't return to Canada for two more decades. In May 2014, they opened a Chick-fil-A in the Calgary International Airport near the departure area. And just last year in July of 2018, they announced their plans to expand into Canada starting in Toronto. Over the next five years, they plan to open 15 to 20 stores in Canada. And in August of 1996, they opened their first location outside of North America in Durban, South Africa. They also opened a second location in November of 1997 in Johannesburg, South Africa. But by 2001, both of these stores were closed due to unprofitability. As it is clear, they really don't have an international presence. But how are they so successful within America? First of all, they have a really simple menu and their focus has remained on chicken sandwiches. They really haven't moved that much away from their original menu. They care more about keeping their best selling food high quality and improving it if possible than trying to add new food. Nothing on their menu is of poor quality and they are very proud of every single food item that they serve. This has really helped create great brand loyalty and Americans often associate chicken sandwiches with Chick-fil-A. Other fast food chains have tried to expand and this simply distorts the view on the restaurant. When restaurants try to do this, people don't have a clear view on why to go to a restaurant. And eventually, they stop going to that restaurant and the best example of this is KFC. They were iconic for fried chicken and people went there to get fried chicken. But in the 1990s, they tried to move away from fried items and chicken by introducing stuff like the Double Down. And this led to their main menu item, fried chicken, to suffer in quality as they were focusing on new menu items. And people started noticing this fall in quality and they started to associate KFC with bad food. As it is evident, it is very important to keep your main menu item of high quality because that's what people associate with your restaurant. And Chick-fil-A executes that perfectly and today they are one of the fastest growing restaurants. They have engraved in many people's mind that if you want a chicken sandwich, you go to Chick-fil-A. And that is really what drives most of their traffic. Their business model of having hands-on management has also really led to a great success. Getting a chance to run a Chick-fil-A is extremely difficult, like less than 1% chance. It is literally harder to become an operator of a Chick-fil-A than attend one of the most prestigious universities in the world. And Chick-fil-A operators must complete an extensive multi-week training program as well. 
and finally, they can take over operation of their own location. Chick-fil-A makes it very clear that this is not a passive investment, they want hands-on management. It's virtually impossible to run more than a couple of stores, which is already extremely difficult. This ensures that the operators of each store are really dedicated to that one location only. But they really do help you a lot during the whole process. You only have to put down about $10,000 to open a Chick-fil-A. That's because they're not looking to expand as fast as possible with franchise applications. They're looking for great store operators who can maintain perfect customer service that lives up to the Chick-fil-A brand. For the amount of profit that they generate, they could go around opening stores all over the place without any franchises. But they don't want to do that. They want to help small franchise owners. They want to provide customers the perfect experience. They do charge a little bit more than most fast food places, but I think that most people definitely think that it is worth it. Chick-fil-A is almost trying to have all of your locations be local diners run by local owners who are really dedicated to just that one store. And this has allowed Chick-fil-A locations to really trample their competitors in terms of per store sales. And this business approach is one of the key reasons that Chick-fil-A is so successful. And of course, they have great customer service and this is really promoted by their business model. When operators only have one restaurant, they really care about that one restaurant and all the employees that work there. And this really allows them to maintain perfect customer service. Owners get to choose their own wages for workers, but it is usually pretty high compared to other fast food places at $10 to $12, while other fast food places offer just less than $10. This leads to a lot more applications and allows owners to find the best applicant. They can actually choose someone who is dedicated and committed and will actually stay for quite a long time. And it's not just great customer service, they also have great maintenance of all of their locations. Their cleanliness is one of the best in the industry and this really does stick out to customers. And countless third party studies have shown that Chick-fil-A has one of the highest customer satisfaction rates in the industry. And this great customer service and cleanliness really allows Chick-fil-A to have great brand loyalty. They also have great marketing. I mean, who doesn't know their popular slogan, eat more chicken, with misspelled more and chicken? And of course, they have the ads that show the cows holding up signs that say, eat more chicken. And it's not just the marketing content, but their high integrity. In January of 2004, there was a huge mad cow disease scare, and they completely stopped showing cow commercials. They thought that it was insensitive and unfair to take advantage of such circumstances. They really believe that they are fair and they expect other people to be fair to them as well and as a result, they vigorously protect their intellectual rights. There have been more than 30 cases where they fight people for using the phrase, eat more. They believe that this dilutes their distinctiveness and diminishes their marketing power. I do believe that a lot of these cases are pretty petty, but that's a whole other discussion in itself. They also sponsor several events across the nation in several locations and many stadiums as well. For example, they have a store in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, but this still aligns with all of their beliefs. They continue to stay closed on Sundays even though many of the games take place on Sundays. But they do break their beliefs if they believe that people actually need help. For example, on December 17, 2017, there was a power outage in the Atlanta airport and this stranded thousands of travelers. They thought that it would be best if they broke the tradition and opened their store on a Sunday in order to help all of these stranded passengers. Their great marketing and integrity really go a long way. And the last main thing that has helped the company is keeping the company a private, family-owned company and not going public. Before Kathy died in 2014, he actually made his children sign a contract that said that they would never let the company go public. They are, however, allowed to sell to a private company, but they haven't done that either. The fact that they are not owned by a corporate giant allows them to really care about each and every customer. For example, Young Brands has so many successful sub-brands like KFC and Taco Bell and Pizza Hut. They have so many customers and they're such a huge company that they simply cannot care about each individual customer. And this is not necessarily their fault, this is just a side effect of it being so big. Chick-fil-A has really kept to a small number of locations, even today having only 2200 locations across the US. This is nothing compared to other fast food chains that have similar amounts of revenue. Subway has over 10 times this just in the US at 26,000 locations and McDonald's has 13,000 locations in the US. But despite a location disadvantage, Chick-fil-A has been able to remain a strong competitor in the fast food industry. And the fact that they are a family owned brand allows them a lot of power to do stuff that they want that big brands cannot. 
I'm sure that the Sunday closures would not go down well with public investors. In February of 2014, Chick-fil-A announced that they have planned to serve chicken nationwide that was raised without antibiotics within 5 years. Other big brands like McDonald's and KFC simply cannot do this due to their vast size and corporate pressure. But as a private family owned business, Chick-fil-A is able to reap all of these benefits as well. The story of Chick-fil-A is so outstanding as it has such modest roots and they are still so modest. They're not trying to take over the fast food industry or expand internationally. They have their own niche food which is iconic to them and they really stick to this and they care about each and every customer. And this is really what has allowed them to be so successful in the first place. They stick to what they're good at and lead based on moral and ethical beliefs. Creating a restaurant chain that is truly committed to the customer and the food. This is truly an inspirational story. But that's all I have for you guys on Chick-fil-A. Make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next. Also, if you guys like this video, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you like to see more videos just like this one. Until then, I'm Hari. I'll see you guys on the next one.